Hey guys, Josh here from On3 Racing Channel. So we've been battling this uh, two, or 260Z for a while now. We've had the classic, uh, what I would call thud brake pedal. Um, it's got about, I'd say about an inch worth of play, two inches worth of play of just like free nothing and then it kind of thuds and then at the very last you get a little brake pressure to it, um, but it's not till the very end. So we pulled this booster off uh, and we're gonna go ahead and clean it up and paint it and stuff too while it's already off because we didn't do that. I thought it was coated when we got it and apparently it's not. We've got some surface rusting here. So we'll clean it up and put it back before we put it back on. Uh, take care of that for Matt because I know how he is with the uh, rust and all the little particulates. So we'll make sure that it's nice and clean when it goes back on. But so here it is. We've uh, finally got the booster out. It's been taking us a while. And if you do any researching online, you'll find out that the reaction disc uh, is a big cause of this. So what is the reaction disc? Where's it at? How do you get to it, etc. There's a lot of confusion around it. Depending on your booster, you could have either like this, where it's this press in ring here, which I've already went ahead and pulled it out just for the sake of the video. Um, this press in ring here like this, which you can get just pliers or a flathead and just kind of pry up. You want to be careful though, because you can warp it um, if you're not if you're not too careful. So this will just kind of pop out. Um, if it's still a factory booster and it hasn't been remanufactured, there's probably a snap ring in there. Um, so what you're going to do is pull this piece out. I've already got this one loose. And see there's a little warpage, but it's not bad. We can straighten it back out and it'll be just fine. So now this is the plunger right here. So we're going to pull it. And it should come with a little rubber grommet there. All right. So see, this is the plunger. This is what actually works here. So... If you've got the reaction disc or not, there's two ways to look and see. Uh, one, you can kind of just glance in here. Let's see if I can get the lighting right. There we go. Uh, and if it looks like that, then you can see the kind of that metal circle centerpiece right there, then it is not in there. Another way is just to rattle the booster around and see if you can hear it. Um, what the reaction disc looks like, I've already got it pulled out here, being this one was out, is this little piece right here. Just a little rubber piece, nothing fancy. That's all it is, but basically what it is is a spacer in there that goes, it gets this, like that. And so what happens when it's not in there, you've got to make up for that space right there that the reaction disc does. So you'll have brake pedal play until you hit the back of this now, and then there's just not enough travel left once you've done that to push the master cylinder, making your brakes just feel like garbage. There's a couple things that can happen. Uh, sometimes these do just fall. This one is an aftermarket one and it's got some grease around it to help it stay in place. This one was probably my bad. Uh, I believe when we were changing the master cylinder out um, and we were installing the booster, we got under there and we were trying to get the little collector pin in and the booster got pushed a little bit. And when it did, I'm pretty sure it caused the reaction disc to fall out. Don't know that for sure, but there's a good chance that that's what happened. Um, either way, it's a simple fix. There's just four screws, um, or four, four bolts under the uh, dash, and then the bolts for the uh, master cylinder. I would film it, but it's a pain to get up under there. Just crawl up under there, you'll see it. Um, so the biggest thing you want to do, make sure that gets put back, and you'll see there's two different sides. See how that's got the little circle piece on this side? That circle piece sets inside the indention circle there. And then the flat side pushes against the flat side here. So you want to make sure if you put it back in that you put it back in correctly. Um, but for now guys, that's it. We're going to stick this back together, see if it fixes the issue. Uh, if it does, we're going to drive this turbo car on this nice cold day and get the brakes adjusted uh, because we did put a proportioning valve in it uh, for the rear disc brake. So get it adjusted, go have some fun, and hopefully deliver the car back to them. So uh, as always, stay tuned guys, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.